Welcome parents to virtual back to school night. I'm Miss Hubble. I'm the fourth and fifth grade reading and math teacher. Thank you for joining me. We're going to start off with our old sorting hat your kids put on their head the very first day to get sorted into their magical houses. We took their photos and we put them here in their magical passports to learning because this year our school theme is travel. Learning can take us anywhere. So we've got here our board that says, let us travel on and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Quote by J.K. Rowling, you'll soon find that I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. We've already got some of their work up on the board here, their fudge character posters. We have a few more things that they worked on over the summer, some of their collages and dioramas. I've still got a couple of those on display here in the hall so that the other upper school students can enjoy it. Let's come on into the room. So you'll see we've got everybody's desks. They're all six feet apart for good social distancing. Everybody has their own cubby, their very own cubby that they do not share. Every kiddo's got an art bucket full of all their very own supplies. They won't be sharing supplies. So that's uh, for safety as well. Let's see what we got here. Back here at the back of the room, we have our uh, homework board. As big upper school students, your child will not receive a homework agenda or anything like that for the whole week. Your child each day is responsible to write down his or her own homework assignments in their agenda in both my class and in my part partner teacher's classroom. So we do that as a class. I'll come up here and I'll put that on the board and your child writes it down while I'm talking about it and writing it up here uh, on the board. So we do that as, as a class, kind of prepare them for as they move on they'll uh, be more accustomed to taking down their own homework assignments responsibly. Each morning when they come in to me, or in the afternoon when they come in to me for fourth grade, they uh, turn that homework in all on their own to our homework basket here. We do have a, a great deal of technology here in our school, of course, right here in our classroom. We do have a computer. Um, we do have several uh, classroom iPads. We also have access to the computer lab right across the hall that we use all the time. Also an entire uh, class set of iPads across the hall whenever we need them. These are here in our classroom all the time though for those quick catch an AR quiz, do a little bit of math, that sort of thing. Um, oh, this is our little hornworm turning into a moth. He's cocooning. That's our fifth grade class pet. So thank you uh, for bringing that in guys. We have here our classroom library. It's actually a little expansive. We have um, the library here. We have more library here. We actually have library on the bottom of both of our cubbies over there too. So lots of classroom library books that your student is always welcome to borrow from my uh, class. As they turn those in back to me, they put them in the library book bin because they do have to go into book quarantine for several days before those books can go safely back into circulation. Of course, that's in addition to checking out books from the library. And of course, most of the books they have at home are probably accelerated reader books anyway. You can use arbookfinder.com to see if the books they already have are good for taking AR tests too. So let's keep going. We've got here our uh, evidence board. This is really important because uh, as fourth and fifth graders, your students are gonna be required to write meatier, more well-supported, constructed responses on their tests. So I kind of use this to prepare them and give them good examples of what those well-supported answers are gonna look like. And throughout the year, I'm gonna be referring back to this and your children are gonna be referring back to this evidence board so that they can write good, meaty, well-supported answers on their tests. So if your a child comes home and they're wishing they had done even better on a constructed response than they did, ask them, are you using the evidence board? Because I know you need to do that. Uh, here we have our class responsibilities chart. You're gonna free Davi with all these socks. So um, your child receives a new class responsibility each week. We'll put their little sock underneath the class job. So important for students to be a part of taking care of all the responsibilities in a classroom. It's their classroom when they have a job to take care of every week. So let's see what else we have over here. Our calendar and uh, very important. This is our learning targets uh, board up here. Our class objectives. We have some for fourth grade here. We have some for fifth grade. I'm gonna keep this updated for your child because it's just imperative 
that it's very clear to them what exactly their learning objectives are going to be every week. What is it that we're trying to be able to do by the end of the week? It's not just I want to learn about something. I want to learn to do things. And that's what this target board is going to help them hone in on, those objectives that they're trying to, to meet and those skills that they're trying to hone. Okay, so uh, up here at the uh, front of the room, that podium, we have our smart board here. I use a smart board every single day. I'm big, big, big on visual learning in addition to the oral learning. So um, I make PowerPoints for just about everything. For our Pearson math, we have um, math videos and uh, keep math PowerPoints on the board so that we're all in the same place at the same time. You'll see that I send home PowerPoints to you for their reading and spelling. Don't print those, they're long. It's gonna have everything in there for our activities and uh, words and all the things, all the background knowledge we're trying to build in a PowerPoint. So they're quite lengthy and I hate for, to see you guys print all that out. Um, they are gonna receive a spelling list and a vocabulary list every single week so you don't have to print the PowerPoints. I do like to send them home though because a lot of the kids much prefer to study their spelling words or study their vocabulary words with the full color pictures, uh, sliding through it on their tablet or sliding through it on your cell phone in the car to study. They like using the technology. So I do share that with you every week so that you um, can access those from home, even though you probably won't print them. Okay, um, let's talk just another moment about Pearson. Um, for fifth graders, I've already actually sent home all their online login information and a sleeve at the front of their binders. Uh, fourth graders, they're going to be receiving theirs this week for Pearson Math logins. So for um, Pearson Math, they can access our complete series online from home. They can look at the lessons we're learning, they can do little quizzes, they can watch learning videos to supplement their learning. Anytime your kiddo comes home with something on their homework that we might have done that day, Sometimes a fourth grader or a fifth grader goes home and has a complete blank and they don't remember what we did that day. I know that you know that happens. You can refer back to the um, Pearson Online Learning. You can look at some of those learning videos. There's always two videos for every lesson and they're really quite good. And that'll help you as a parent to support your child when they need support, okay? Um, our virtual learners in fifth grade are joining us every day on this little guy right here. So these are my fifth graders that join us on Plan B Virtual. So if I'm up here, there they are. If a student is uh, talking, boom, they're watching the student that's talking. We try to kind of carry them around the room with us so that they can take part in as much as possible. They're doing a great job so far, and who knows if we may end up doing more virtual students in the future. So I'm glad to know it's really working out well for us at this time, okay? So uh, join me. We'll talk just a little bit more about Pearson. Our Pearson series came with some really good math manipulatives, and I love, love, love math manipulatives. So for example, when we started our uh, year, especially in fourth grade, we were reviewing that place value, so important. So we've got our hundreds flats, and our tens sticks, and our little unit cubes, and our thousands cubes, and the students all had their own set so that they could manipulate those and put together big numbers using their place value base 10 blocks. That was pretty neat. Another cool thing that our uh, manipulative series came with was um, fraction bars. They're wonderful, especially when we're um, learning to add and subtract and manipulate and compose and decompose fractions. We're going to go even further with that this year in fifth grade, so I'm guessing these fraction bars are going to make an appearance again in fifth grade, just like they did in fourth grade. Um, another awesome manipulative that we have is um, some incredibly realistic looking cash, some cash and coins that came with our series. Um, one thing I just hate about little paper money, little paper coins, they just don't look realistic enough. These bad boys are the right color, the right size, they're the right everything, and they're double-sided. This is great um, when we're learning how to make change, we're learning how to add and subtract money, we can actually sit there with the bills and the coins and we can manipulate them, that's really helpful. Um, we just try to do things as, uh, keep things as lively as we can in here, even if that means like, hey, my answer was 36, and then they can share that with me so we can uh, socially distance, give me an answer from wherever they are in the room. Anytime they get to use tiny dry erase boards or magnetic boards, they love that. So we'll try to do that as much as we can. Um, 
think I've shown you the whole room. I'm sure by now you've noticed there's a lot of magical stuff in here. Up here we've got our little uh, our dragon up here at the ceiling. We've got our big spider friend Aragog. We've got all our big house banners up here. All the things that uh, are in our classroom. We've got our uh, educational proclamations. Those are our class rules. You can read more about those on the PowerPoint that I'm sending home to you. That back to school PowerPoint. It's going to have lots of good links to videos, a sample Pearson lesson, um, some cool uh, whole brain vocabulary words that some of your own students came up with. Seeing some of those links are going to help you have a better idea of how I do things here in uh, our class for reading and math. Um, if you're interested in taking the full uh, tour of minutia, everything that is Harry Potter in this classroom, I've gone ahead and I've attached a uh, a link to a Facebook photo gallery of all the Harry Potter stuff in my classroom. So you can flip through there if you're a Harry Potter fan yourself, or if your kiddo is, they may want to look and see if they recognize all the things in the photo gallery. Uh, I just can't tell you how excited I am to be teaching your uh, fifth graders again this year. I can't tell you how excited I am to be teaching these new fourth graders this year. They're a wonderful group of kids, and if there's anything I can ever do for you, my email is in the PowerPoint, and you have it already. I know you do. You're already seeing all of our newsletters. If there's anything that Ms. Prejean and I can do for you, just email us. We'll get right to you. If your child needs um, help with anything, you let us know. Or better yet, they're big upper school students. Have them let us know. Let's get that communication um, responsibility on those kiddos because they are certainly old enough and responsible enough to handle it at this point. So either way would work for me. Have a great night, guys.